All right, this, in class, this week in class, we're going to focus on a couple of new details here. Joint types and how we make them. Picked up a bunch of these little magnets here, little Harbor Freight magnets, inexpensive. They're going to aid you in taking a couple of plates, stacking them up, getting them ready to go. Powerful little magnets. And then you just tack this into place. Boom, boom, take the magnet off and weld it. So great little uses. We have enough for every booth. Let's go over the basic five joint types and talk about why and how. Whenever you are aiming into the center of a plate, like so, when you're aiming into the center of that plate, that's a heat sink. It can actually handle a lot of heat. It may cause some distortion on thin plate, but it can handle a lot of heat here before this actually starts to become molten. This we will call a heat sink. Whenever you're welding just on the edge here, that can't take too much heat. And so it's not long that you're welded on this before this will burn away and you'll have to go uh, add some filler to make that thing go. So five basic joint types. Just so you know, surface welding, what we did last week, is not a joint type. So in, in order from kind of easiest to hardest, I think this is about the easiest joint you can do. This is an edge joint. You can see I got two pieces there and I welded the top edge together. See that edge joint, that's what the two pieces look like before we welded them and then after. Edge joints are easy, although you do not have a heat sink. These are very easy because these two edges melt. And even though they should just evaporate away, they don't really have a lot of place to go. So they just a little bit of melt down there, nice and easy. No filler rod. So this is an autogenous or a no filler rod joint. Just base material there. We haven't added anything. That's the easiest. By the way, another look at an edge joint would be this one right here. You can see I bent the two pieces up. Got the edge joint, boom, just like so. You can see what it looks like before we weld it there. Another kind of edge joint. Kind of comes together in a butt configuration where you're butting the two pieces together, but that's an edge joint. The next easiest now, this is fairly easy because you have a heat sink right here. And this plate's gonna take a lot of heat. So much so that you actually need to make sure that electrode sits over on this side longer than this side. So it's kind of a two count here, one here, two, one, two, one. And you just work your way back. Keep the heat sink nice and hot, catch that edge. Nice and hot, catch that edge. Nice and hot. This is nice. They're hard to make look at exactly as they should. You can see even mine wanders. Looks pretty good, looks pretty good. Then all of a sudden this line deflects this way, about an eighth to a quarter of an inch. That's because I started here was good. I was very mindful of that edge here. Started melting that edge back. And you can see the weld wanders because of that. The next easiest joint, and these are a little challenging to first start off, but once you get going on them, you'll realize this is a pretty easy joint. Heat sink right here, absorb the heat edge right there. You can see what happens there if you get too hot on the edge. You just burn right through it like I did, right? Not ideal. Keep the heat sink here, two count on the bottom on the heat sink, aim the torch at the heat sink for two count. Come up here, catch this edge, heat sink for two, edge, heat sink for two, catch this edge, boom, boom, boom. And when you're welding this now, the key is to really get that electrode into that groove. When you're welding, you're like this, just adding that filler super close, not touching, but super close. That's a T-joint. Next easiest joint, and this is only really easy because here in the lab we're using these big thick copper plates. That's about a quarter of an inch of copper right there, if you can see that. And we're welding right on top of them, so that keeps the bottom of this weld nice and cool, allows for the material to fill in. But a butt joint, and this is what we were doing last week in class, nice and easy. I did this in two steps, one here, one there. It looks like I got a little contamination with what that orange is. Probably a little air bubble or something. Finally, the last joint now is gonna be this corner joint. Just like so, two pieces put together like that, weld on this outside corner, just like so. That's hard because you got two edges and unless you come in here and really prop that heat sink up in there so that it holds everything together, unless you do that, you're gonna end up with a bit of burn through and melt away. You're welcome to do that when you're performing this joint, whatever makes life easy. Trying to learn, not make you perfect welders. There you go, so that's a basic five joint types. It's really important that when you're welding, you could use a magnet to tack to make little tackings to hold it together, but you don't want to weld the magnet on there. One, you'll destroy the magnet. These cost about a dollar a piece. I don't care about that. 
but two, you're going to cause some wandering arc due to the magnetic prince due to the magnetic properties of the arc and how this magnet interferes with that. So you always want to take these off once you actually start welding your joint. So that's the basic five joint types. Here earlier in the week, I also sent out a video talking about polarity. And then as the week gets going, we're going to start talking about different tungsten types. All right, everybody, have a good afternoon.